But I, I found this work that was recommended here by Eugen Schmidhuber to be incredible. Uh, it's called his paper, Driven by Compression Progress, a simple principle explains essential aspects of subjective beauty, novelty, surprise, interestingness, attention, curiosity, creativity, art, science, music, jokes. So Schmidhuber gives an algorithmic framework of the drive of all intelligent creatures. So to quote the abstract here, I argue that data becomes temporarily interesting by itself to some self-improving but computationally limited subjective observer once he learns to predict or compress the data in a better way, thus making it subjectively simpler and more beautiful. Curiosity is the desire to create or discover more non-random, non-arbitrary, regular data that is novel and surprising, not in the traditional sense of Boltzmann and Shannon, but in the sense that it allows for compression progress because its regularity was not yet known. This drive maximizes interestingness, the first derivative of subjective beauty or compressibility, that is, the steepness of the learning curve. It motivates exploring infants, pure mathematicians, composers, artists, dancers, comedians, yourself, and since 1999, or sorry, since 1990, artificial systems. All right, so you gotta love how Schmidt Huba talks. He's, he's an interesting guy, uh, maybe a bit grandiose, but uh, there's a lot he's saying here and a lot to be said about it. And I think what's weird is, once you really learn about this idea, so many things do become explainable within the framework. So let's try to dig into this here. I, I think this is pretty significant. Uh, let's start with a simple example of compression, because this is a lot, a lot about uh, compression drive. So for example, if you receive a data package which contains A, 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 B, 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 so five A's, four B's, you could just compress that into five A, four B which has the same meaning, but takes up less space. So this type of compression is called run length encoding because you define how long the run of a character is. And in the above example, uh, there are two runs, a run of five A's and another four B's. And that's from the data compression Wikipedia article. So that's the basic idea of compression, right? It's just you're getting the same information in a smaller amount of space. And there are a ton of compression algorithms out there. But in the human case, our data stream is not a sequence of letters, but the whole of our experience, our thoughts, feelings, and sensations. Our encoding, decoding, and compression scheme is still not fully known. However, the algorithmic framework is given in section 1.2 as follows. And I just, yeah, remove the citations here, but Schmidhuba defines four steps to this in this algorithmic process. So number one, you store everything. And number two is you improve subjective compressibility. And three is you let intrinsic curiosity reward reflect compression progress. And number four is you maximize intrinsic curiosity reward. So let's go through it. So step one, store everything. During interaction with the world, store the entire raw history of actions and sensory observations, including reward signals. The data is holy as it is the only basis of all that can be known about the world. To see that full data storage is not unrealistic, a human lifetime rarely lasts much longer than three times 10 to the ninth power seconds. The human brain has roughly 10 to the 10 uh, 10, 10 to the 10th power neurons. So each with 10 to the 4th power synapses on average. So assuming that only half of the brain's capacity is used for storing raw data, and that each synapse can store at most 6 bits, there is still enough capacity to encode the lifelong sensory input stream with a rate of roughly 10 to the 5th bits per second comparable to the demands of a movie with reasonable resolution. 
So the storage capacity of affordable technical systems will soon exceed this value. So we can put this in machines. And if you can store the data, don't throw it away. So again, that was step one, store everything. Step two is you improve subjective compressibility. So in principle, any regularity in the data history can be used to compress it. The compressed version of the data can be viewed as its simplifying explanation. Thus, to better explain the world, spend some of the computation time on an adaptive compression algorithm trying to partially compress the data. For example, an adaptive neural network may be able to learn to predict or post-dict some of the historic data from other historic data, thus incrementally reducing the number of bits required to encode the whole. So step three was let intrinsic curiosity reward reflect compression progress. The agent should monitor the improvements of the adaptive data compressor. Whenever it learns to reduce the number of bits required to encode the historic data, generate an intrinsic reward signal or curiosity reward signal in proportion to the learning progress or compression progress, that is, the number of saved bits. Basically, the better able you are to compress your past experience, the more of a reward you get, either through curiosity or just an intrinsic, oh, that feels good. And step four is you maximize intrinsic curiosity reward. So let the action selector or controller use a general reinforcement learning algorithm, which should be able to observe the current state of the adaptive compressor to maximize expected reward, including intrinsic curiosity reward. To optimize the latter, a good reinforcement learning algorithm will select actions that focus the agent's attention and learning capabilities on those aspects of the world that allow for finding or creating new, previously unknown but learnable regularities. In other words, it will try to maximize the steepness of the compressor's learning curve. This type of active, unsupervised learning can help it figure out how the world works. So this kind of, I think, makes some intuitive sense, right? It's like, where does curiosity come from? Why do we have curiosity? And it's also, how, do we, how does an intelligent agent choose what to do? And it's really about following your curiosity. And again, how do we evaluate curiosity from internally, subjectively? Well, your curiosity is what your, your body, the schema in it, thinks will compress your history the most the history of your information, your experience. So we'll give a ton of examples of this, but section 1.3 of the paper discusses the relation to external reward. The description given applies to internal rewards, curiosity, um, satisfaction. But of course, the real goal of many cognitive systems is not just to satisfy their curiosity, but to solve externally given problems. Any formalizable problem can be rephrased as in a reinforcement learning problem for an agent living in a possibly unknown environment, trying to maximize the future external reward expected until the end of its possibly finite lifetime. So, you know, it's, it's using its internal reward, but it's also trying to solve external problems and external rewards. You know, an external reward might be like, um, you know, taking a warm bath that's nice, that's comforting, but anything external. And we use our ability to compress to try to solve problems in the external world. But in many contexts, we live in a rare reward environment. So one way of focusing and directing our actions is through our internal rewards of compression until an external rare reward is reached. Like this can be why playing a chess game for a machine is kind of difficult because uh, and technically, it's when you win a game that you get the most reward. And the end of the game is, of course, at the very end. So the reward is very sparse. We have to make a lot of decisions in terms of how we move pieces until we finally get to the end of the game. But another way of looking at that, though, is to then, well, if the ex external world is so sparse in reward, we can be driven by our internal rewards. So again, that's like curiosity and satisfaction and these types of things. And Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this clip, 
please consider checking out the full video and the series linked in the description.